middle children. No. So we talked some about like when the big family gatherings would happen, like what that was like. And everybody talked a lot about 311. Would you guys, anything about when you guys would gather at 311 North Roberts? See that, I don't know. I'm just a kid. He's a kid. He's, 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 he's a lot younger. Okay. Now Roger, we're at home. We're doing videoing in here. Well, you were too little to remember any of that. I come up with some stories, but I, I don't know. I don't really remember being at 311 with you. Huh? Well, I don't remember hardly ever being at 311. Mm -hmm. That's just. Do you remember Odessa? When yes, you guys I gathered in Odessa? Odessa? As a matter of fact, what I intended to talk about was like Odessa. You tell me when, when you turn it on, we'll start the story. All right, it's going. Okay, I can remember several things about Noel when he was young, because he's a couple of years younger than I am, but he was kind of a stocky kid, and pretty big for his age, so Roger and I had boxing gloves when we lived at Kiefer, and we thought, hey, get this little cousin coming to see us, we can get him in a boxing match. Well, we didn't know, he was tougher than we were. He, he knocked away out of us, so we, we nicknamed him Furpo, because there was a, some boxer by some, some name kind of like that, that was, well known right then, so this was this was Furpo. We, we we learned not to challenge him in the boxing. <laughs> well, I'm, what it occurs to me, I'm of course quite a bit younger than <laughs> Ken, significantly younger than Roger, and they they were just enough older than I am, so that they were kind of a bit of a hero image for me in those days. And I remember, I think the thing that sticks in my mind is I don't remember much anything about North Roberts. And, but I remember we were there together at Odessa at, when uh, Grand Rapids and Cherry lived out there. And um, they had, of course, the big pipe yard that was just open. And they had, Brad had at the time, this old Dash Rambler uh, vehicle. And for some reason, the, Roger and Kent were down there, and I was, of course, tagging along with him at the time. Well, Roger decided he needed to drive the Dash Rambler without permission or anyone's knowledge. So it turns out, turns out he said, so we got in the car, and he said, I, I'll show you how to start the car without the key. And, and he had took a 50 cent piece and held it up under the dash behind the ignition, and the car started. And so we drove around the pipe yard, and there were those big doings. And I talked to Roger yesterday, I said, you know, I remember that. He says, the thing that impressed me now looking back on it is I'm pretty sure you knew how to hot wire a car before that particular. <laughs> <laughs> what your first try? Well, you sure didn't know exactly how to do that. And he was just laughing. So anyway, that was a fun time. Now they lived in Lake Jackson, Texas, which is down pretty close to the coast. And we went down to visit them when I was a teenager and gee, in the afternoon it starts raining. So I'm gonna go inside, it's raining, you know, in Oklahoma, it rains. That's an unusual enough thing you go, we well, no, no. Why are you going inside? It's, it's just the afternoon shower. It's like, it showers every afternoon. If, if you went in every time it showered, you'd waste part of your playtime. So, that, that was kind of different, you know, because up, up here on the dry plains, hey, rain's kind of precious. Lake Jackson, it was sort of a daily event. Yeah. That's changed for sure, living in the desert. Yeah, well, I'm with you now. <laughs> rain is an event. <laughs> That's funny. The other thing I remember about going to visit you all was how your dad had to be ready to just pick up and travel, sort of like that. You know, for us, my, my father's line of work and all, it was right there, living across from the school, being there at 7.30 or whatever it was to greet the teachers and get the school day started. But uh, your dad, you know, traveled a lot, working for Dow Chemical, wherever the and he they, was. They had a and project he could, he could, run at the time. Yeah. We were down there visiting, he came in one day and he said, well, I've got to leave for a couple of days, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. He packs his suitcase in about 10 minutes, <laughs> telling your mother goodbye and out the door. And she kind of we apologized a little bit that he was leaving while we were there visiting. So that's just kind of the nature of his job. That he just has to be ready to go when the need arises. Mm -hmm. So that was a little different. Well, talk about um, now. Was it Waldine and Al were pretty close? Were they the closest in terms of that? 
Right. They must have been. And now I'm, I've heard Mother talking, and I think the, what she remembers a lot about Al as a, as a young person, must have been in high school age, was when Al was involved in playing tennis. And apparently, you know, to play tennis, he had to have his shorts just right and whatever with a shirt, whatever the uniform of the, of the period was. But I th apparently that was quite of a, an event to, and that mother and probably the other sisters were involved with in making sure that, that Al had proper, 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 attire. proper attire, properly iron pressed and so forth <laughs> for, the, for his tennis events. His outfits. Wow. I don't know why that clock is going off. I think in that family, you know, Lita was quite a bit older than the others, and they kind of held her in a certain regard as the older sister. And then Mom, Waldine, and Al were all a little, a little closer uh, in terms of sharing things and being in school at the same time. Yeah. They made it so, earlier. Someone made it sound like Lila was the kind of more the rule follower and would kind of chide the others to really. You know, you haven't heard that? No. I haven't heard that one. No. Okay, curious. curious. I know that mom was the kind of person who, in her school days, was involved with everything. Because I've looked at some of her old high school and college yearbooks, and the list of what all she participated in was just like this. If it was the Shakespeare Club, or the Lasso Club, or the Pep Squad, or the Shakespeare Club, you name it, she wanted mm -hmm. to be part of it. So, mm -hmm. so she was a joiner, I know that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means rule follower. What's your mom like? Rita, really, I don't know. She talks about the being in the bow house. Have you heard of the bow house? Mm -hmm. I guess that was the cheerleading group at the. Uh, Ed, Edmund was the Bulldogs. Yeah, the Edmund Bulldogs. And they, their cheer group was were called the Bow Yeah. And yeah, you know, she kept bringing that up from time to time. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, I'd forgotten that, I'd forgotten that term, but you know, I remember mom talking about being in the bow wows. So I'm interested in all these men in the family that were oil field guys or were away from the home and then a lot and then kind of lived this other life with their families. And so, I mean, would you guys talk about, I mean, it would be your uncle and your grandfather. And did you all know anything about their life out in the field or was it, what was that like? Not a whole lot, I would say. Uh, I would say when we went to, visit at 311, and, and I remember this maybe a little better than Noel does, that Judy Best definitely was the one who ruled the family. You know, she was the matriarch and she was the one who had everything organized. And uh, Grand Rep could fix all sorts of things. He had a little shop out in the garage where he could work on things. But he was kind of more a working kind of outdoors sort of guy. And he was kind of quiet and didn't talk nearly as much as she did and tell him a whole lot of stories. I wish, in fact, in retrospect, he had told more stories about what he did out in the field. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he did some interesting things, and we have that record that uh, he gave in the early 1950s when he was working for Carl B. King about his experience, and as you read it, you think, my gracious, he was involved with the oil business starting in 1907 when it was a very infant industry. Uh, now, when we went to when they were living in Odessa, which was from 49 until 58, they lived in a very limited sized apartment. Mm -hmm. Above the warehouse. Above the warehouse. Mm -hmm. So he was always around. He might be down in the warehouse mm -hmm. working, but you, you could go down there and see where he was working. And he liked to talk with the guys who worked down there and go over and see what the mechanics, what they were doing and how they were getting this engine fixed or where they getting this drill ready to go or whatever. Uh, so you saw him a little bit interacting with workers in the oil business and he obviously knew a lot about all the machinery and who needed what kind of a drill or who needed what kind of pipes and all that sort of stuff. But uh, Did Al ever talk about his work? Not a whole lot. Uh, of course, by the time I was old enough to know Al, he was more in a supervisory capacity. He was a district manager for Phillips and he was telling people how to how to operate and how to drill and how to do things. And uh, I don't remember him talking a whole lot about, other than maybe how many wells they had working or 
No, I didn't. I, I didn't know Alan at all. Well, we were, our group family was really never all that close. Like we were geographically separated. But you know, again, when it was, as Ken said, retrospective would have really been interesting to hear his take on some of that because he that was he started in the early forties. Forty one. So that was the boom times in the American oil industry. So it would have really been interesting. I, I didn't, wasn't fortunate enough to to have heard those stories. Mm -hmm. You wonder how many wells he helped bring in for Philip Petroleum. Oh, yeah. I mean, Phillips provided him employment for more than 40 years and a pension for another long period of time after he retired. But I've wondered how many wells he worked on and how many wells he helped bring in over a 40 plus year career. Well, and so, particularly you have to remember that at those times, those, those fields that were developed were very closely spaced. So, when you would have developed a field, you're probably talking about a hundred or more wells. Well, these are so, yeah, done a lot of wells. What do you all remember about the way that your parents interacted, like the three sisters and the brother, when you all were together? Well, I think they kind of. Well, I, I know they very much looked forward to being together. They kind of reverted to their childhood. I think. <laughs> Maybe we all do, mm -hmm. and they were, you know, they just obviously that they really kind of have fond memories of their time together as children. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that, and I would say my father and to some degree your father were a little standoffish, like because they were a little more formal, a little more, uh, and came from a different family. Came from a different family sure. background, and like. Oh my gracious! Were <laughs> they doing playing wild card games or jacks games or yeah. pulling pranks on one another? Because that was not my father at all, and uh, I would no, say it wasn't your father at all either. Not. Right. So, but but Lita and Lila and Waldy and Al, they obviously had some fond childhood memories and, and, and reverted back to some of those. Mm -hmm patterns when they got together mm -hmm. as a group. Now, there were a limited number of times that all four of them were together at one time. Of course, physically, you couldn't have all been together in Odessa because there just wouldn't have been enough space for everyone to be there. But even even at the house of 311 North Roberts, everyone couldn't have been there at one time. It wasn't that big of a house. Mm -hmm. So the gatherings were usually maybe two families there yeah. at one time. Not other hot stories, whatever. Hot stories? <laughs> fun, fun, fun stories. stories. Well, the Odessa was hot, but... <laughs> yeah, Odessa was hot. Uh, Odessa was... If you think Oklahoma's kind of hot and dry, try Odessa. It's another step down the, that direction. Mm -hmm. So, and, and of course, we usually went for our visits in the summer because that was when uh, mm -hmm. Mom and Dad were out of school and could take a trip. So. I remember our trips to Odessa being hot and dry. Yeah. We talk about correspondence, didn't Waldine correspond back and forth with her sibling son and her mom? You know, I, I guess I'm not really aware. You don't know? No. Yeah. I wonder if there's, well, you would have seen letters, Kent, if there were. Were there letters from Waldine? I don't have a lot of those. Okay. Uh, you know, I've got a few old letters. I would have to look through, you know, I've got boxes of yeah. junk at the house, or I shouldn't say junk. Treasures. Treasures at the house <laughs> that somehow or another, because I'm the Oklahoma representative, have come to my closet mm -hmm. or my drawer, and I'm not sure I've been even through all of them. But off the top of my head, I can only remember two or three from Waldine. Mm -hmm. I've been More interested. from Lita yeah. than probably anyone else. Lita was a big... She writer. was a correspondent. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. I just wanted to gather a few stories. Okay. <laughs>